What's up, y'all? On this episode of Build a Kingdom, we're gonna fabricate up the front bumper bars here and get the nose piece mounted. <clears throat> Not super complicated, but you do need a tubing bender for this one. So, you can see the basic structure here. Um, this piece is slid up into the unibody here where it gets welded in. That's not how everybody does it, because of course when you're fabricating stuff like this, there are multiple ways to do it. Um, this bar goes on the bumper here. I'll, uh, I'll grab the camera here in a second and I'll show you my car because it's sitting right there and it's already done and we'll talk about a accident that I had last year and how well this design actually held up. So, let's get started. Okay, so as you can see, this is my car. It's all welded together. Got that top bar that we saw over there. Here it's all welded in up top. Up here it's all welded in. We actually put a little gusset on the inside here just for a little extra strength up and down. Okay. Now, when I do this, I have to... I got to put the nose piece together and put it on the car so that I know how far I can slide this out. Because I want to slide it out as far as I can, right up until it's touching the nose piece. Right here we got the nose piece for the new car on the floor. We got to rivet it together here in the center and get it set up to go on the car. But... We gotta slide this out as far as we can to uh, get it to touch the nose piece. And then we can bring these uprights down and then this piece here that we wrap around the, the front of the bumper. As you can see, this that's a good hit. Cut the metal. So we keep the stock bumper. We weld this bar right to the front of it. We've bent a curve into it so it fits the curvature of the bumper. And then it sticks out a little bit to hold the nose piece and kind of protect this section here. This is how it's supposed to look. It's not bent or kinked or nothing. On this side, it's smashed in a little bit here. You can see this is all pushed in, it's flat. It smashed the bumper a little bit in the corner here. It's got a little kink right there. And uh, we're a little wrinkled up here. This is punched in and all wrinkled around a little bit. And this pressure here where it got punched in has caused it to kink up here a little bit in the unibody. But this is all in front of the suspension point. So it took the hit, you know, and it soaked up the energy into the unibody. It soaked up the energy into the bumper here. It didn't, it didn't torque the main structure a lot. These rails did move a hair, but I think it's, we took a bunch of measurements. It's like less than half an inch. They moved that direction with the hit. But again, in front of the suspension points. So not a problem. Basically what happened is I screwed up. I made a mistake. I was racing with my teammate harder than I should have been racing with him. And we just touched coming off a of turn four up at Ransomville and it flattened my right front tire. Uh, at the time I had a bead lock on it, but it must've tore a hole in the sidewall or something going down the straightaway. I had zero signal that it was flat. Uh, Ransomville is a pretty big track. We're doing about 70 miles an hour at the end of the straightaway. And when I turned the wheels, she no turn. It went straight because the tire was flat. So I got it wowed up a little bit, but, I'd still say we were probably doing 50, 45, 50 when we nosed it into the wall. Um, and this obviously took the brunt of the impact was right on this corner. I mean, it punched that in pretty good up there. Um, but it took the wheel and wrapped the beadlock around the rim like a taco, the front of the beadlock. Destroyed the control arm, destroyed the axle, destroyed the strut, broke the motor mount on this side, broke the motor mount on the back. Uh, it was a hard hit. It, it rang my bell. Um, I pushed the wheel back and smashed the firewall all up. Smashed that rocker panel back in a little bit. It was a hard hit. The hardest hit I've taken in one of these mini stocks anyways. And it was all my fault. So uh, we all make mistakes. It happens. I shouldn't have been pushing it that hard. But as you can see, the structure itself, I mean, it, it, it held. It took the hit. I'm not even going to replace these bars. Like I said, it's in front of the suspension. It, it didn't move, it, like I said, it's about less less than half an inch it moved those front frame horns. So we'll, uh, you know, I don't, I could put a chain on it probably and tug it back a little bit. We're not going to worry about it. We're going to put a new body on the car. It's not out of place enough to make the body not fit right. And there's still plenty of structural support there. So for this season, we're just going to put a body on it, put a paint job on it. Probably swap the motor out for my car. But other than that, we're not doing a ton to this car. This was all about the structure, me showing you the structure here. Like I said, some guys come around the outside. Um, they'll take these bars and they'll come outside the unibody and they'll keep them up tight against this and they'll run them all the way back to the main cage around the outside, around the outside. 
Um, you can do it that way. You know, some guys will skin these bodies right down to nothing and they'll run tubes all the way around the outside. I, I don't know. It seems like overkill to me. It seems like a lot of extra weight. You've got this unibody structure here that's pretty stout. Um, we've been doing it this way for quite a while and it seems to work good. So you, know, you take a hole saw and you drill a hole in the front of that inch and a half. That's what this tubing is. You got to egg it out a little bit because you're at an angle with a die grinder or something, but then you can slide the tubes up in there. Um, as you can see on this car, we did that already. Uh, we have the dimensions written down in the book so that we can just remake these and spit them back out. All these bars here, that, that bar there is the bottom one. Little radiator protector down on the bottom. You can also see there's a piece of angle iron welded across the mounts down there too, because I have actually hit debris and taken a radiator out in a really big money race when I was doing well. So we added the angle across the bottom to protect the radiator there. And then the uh, U-shaped bar there on the bottom it protects the radiator, but it also keeps the front of the nose piece from folding under when it gets all collected with mud and stuff. So a little support for that too, I guess. So that's what we're doing over here. We got to get all this stuff on here. We got to put that nose piece together that's laying on the floor over there. Get that fitted on here. Be a lot of vice grips, and we got to make an aluminum panel to fill this gap. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a good time. But you can see we. Uh, Drill the hole there, and then we had to oval it out because it's on an angle to get this bar to slide up in there. But once I get it right where I want it, we'll weld around that. Probably put a gusset on it again like I did on the other one, just for a little extra strength. Up and down. Then we'll paint it, and we'll put the nose piece on. Well, we'll fit the nose piece before we paint it. But, yeah, good times. Let's go. So we got this all riveted together here. Um, you can see I used vice grips to hold it while I was going down the line here, riveting it. And as you can see, I'm not going light on the rivets here. You don't want this thing flapping in the, getting hit, getting torn and flapping in the wind and you getting black flagged for it. Now, you, when you buy rivets, you can buy backup washers or whatever they call them. They go on the backside to, uh, for a little extra strength because the rivet can get torn through plastic pretty easily. I didn't have any. So a little trick we've been doing for a long time is if you have any old rivets, see if my camera will focus on this, old rivet heads that you drilled off, they work good for back backing for rivets here. I also use exploding rivets. So you look up close here, you can see they, they swell out like a little flower pattern, but there's the head of a rivet that got drilled out behind that one. I didn't do it on all of them, but that gives it a little extra strength when you're riveting plastic to keep it from the rivet just tearing through it because it's soft but that's it get that all riveted together there's not rivets here on purpose because this is the grill section that's going to get cut out that's your air to your radiator so now we got to get it fitted to the car that part's fun all right so i jumped ahead of hair here um i went ahead and i welded this bottom not bottom but the center bar in here the part that goes around the bumper i went ahead and welded that one on and then I went ahead and I made these mounting panels, if you want to call them that. Um, and you can see I put the Clecos specifically in spots to force the aluminum to shape to the fender. So like this curves in, the Clecos there to curve the aluminum in. You know, I use my hand a little bit to shape it. Same thing here, I use my hand a little bit to shape it around these, this curve here. You got two curves going opposite directions here. So the Clecos are purposely in positions to force the aluminum down into the shape. Okay, now, Brad, it's overhanging on both sides. I know, it's on purpose. Um, we're gonna come back and cut these fenders out. I usually cut them right on this body line, right here. So when I come around with the grinder to cut this, I will just continue down through the aluminum and through the nose piece, and we'll have a nice sweeping curvature for the wheel well. Um, 
These are front wheel drive race cars. And oftentimes the only way we can adjust our gearing is with tire size. So if you're running second gear and you go to a big track, you might have to put a giant tire on. That's why we cut that out. Also, if you run race tires, there's only a couple of tracks left in the area that do. It's silly at this point. Um, you need to cut them out too because the race tires are usually pretty big. Um, I'm not going to get into politics and the fact that the economy's crap and race tires have shot up like 200% or something like that. DOTs are up 50%. That's all we're going to say about that. The prices are out of control. But back to building. So at this point, we'll lift this nose piece up. Try to get it lined up as best we can, get some Clecos in it, some vice grips. We'll get it hung up there as best we can, and then uh, I'll, I'll run the time lapse for that. You can watch me struggle. Here we go. So, there it is. Hung on the car. As you can see the way it's tipped is pretty good. It's not pointing to the moon. Looks like it fits the contour pretty well. Um, obviously, this isn't a cobalt nose, so it doesn't fit the hood perfectly. Um, I don't trim the hood. I leave it just like that. You know, you got this little bit of gap here. It'll come down more after I trim this extra aluminum off here. This will actually sit down a little bit tighter to the hood and fit it a little bit nicer, but... That's basically what you're trying to do is get that thing hung on there straight. Um, I ran out of Clecos. That's all the Clecos I got in order to hold that nose. So apparently I only have 10, five for each side. But um, when I came in here, you saw me take the grinder and cut this. Uh, it, it's shorter distance on this side. So in order to fold the aluminum down and have it sit, have a smooth transition to the nose piece, I got to make relief cuts in here so that this kind of shrinks up a little bit when you bend it over to, to touch the nose piece. And as I go along here and pull this all in, I'll shape it with my hand a little bit, kind of beat on it, and I'll shape it so that the fender flows a little bit better into this nose. But it's going to be rough like this. I'll take this off, and I'll clean up the edges and round these off so it doesn't get caught on anything or cut any kids that are playing around your car. But, you know, we'll clean it up. This is just a rough version, but I'll probably put one more cut down here someplace. Usually I have three cuts on my car, but... We'll get this folded down and everything riveted in after I get that bumper bracket welded, bumper mounts and everything welded in. So right now I'm going to open the hood. I'm going to slide that top bar back till it touches the nose piece, and then I'll tack it. And then all this is going to come off the car. I'll weld all that front bumper stuff up, all of it. We'll weld it all up. We'll paint it. We'll cut the grill section out of this nose, and then the nose can get riveted on for the final time. But this is the rough to get it where it needs to be so that I know where I can put that that bumper bar in there that one there as you can see it's not touching the nose right now it's pretty close over there you know it's got to come forward mm, inch and a half maybe um what you can't see here and i'll show you after i take the nose off is this molding edge right here from the factory bends up at like a 90 degrees at the end it, it curves around and comes up on the mold that Little mold right there is really close to the tip of that front fender corner where it comes in there. The fender kind of comes to a point. That little hump is probably, oh, an eighth or a quarter just to the outside of that point on both sides when you get this thing lined up. See it in there? And this one's actually bent down a little. It's got kink in it. I probably leaned on it or something. But that molded edge there, that molded bump, is an eighth to a quarter just outside that. That's how you get it centered. That bend is not helping anything, but that's all right. That's how you do it. So now I'll uh, get my arm in the way. Now I'll pull that bar forward and get that stuff all welded up.
there you go. Paint's still wet, so when I, uh, while that's drying, I'm gonna, where's the nose? The nose is over there. I'm gonna cut the grill section out of that nose, but uh, you've heard me talk before about Sharpie and how you gotta clean it off before you paint. See, Sharpie, Sharpie, Sharpie lines. Yeah, I didn't take solvent and wipe it down first like I should have. I just kind of dusted it off and sprayed it. So now you can see Sharpie lines. I'm a little off my game today. Sharpie lines everywhere from when we bent it. But it's under the nose. Nobody's ever going to see it unless the nose gets ripped off. And I try to mount them good enough so that doesn't happen. I've never had one ripped off. So, uh, yeah, it's on there. Structure's welded in. Good and solid. Um, somebody's probably thinking right now, well, you can't take the front bumper off anymore. You're right. You're 100% correct. It is welded right there to the upright. So if you wanted to take this bumper off, you'd have to cut those uprights and then take the 13 millimeter bolts out to get the bumper off, which I have had to do in the past. And then when I put it back together, I just weld those back up. So, I mean, it's, you're fabricating. It's structure. I mean, you could make those uprights, I suppose, so they bolted in. It'd be more fabrication, more screwing around. But I don't bother with that because the, on the occasion you get hit hard enough to destroy this to the point where you have to get that front bumper off, you're going to be refabricating stuff anyway. So not a big deal. Cut them off quick and take the front bumper off if you need to fix the lower section there. Uh, in the time lapse, you saw me lay under it to try to get that bottom piece fitted correctly. Uh, that was the only piece I we didn't have a measurement in the book for. We kind of just wung it and bent a piece, and it's a little bit wider than the one on my car. It's actually quite a bit wider than the one on my car. <laughs> so it's way out here where the pipe actually starts to curve. You can see how ugly that weld is right there because I notched it way too much. I should have notched it at an angle so that it fit the curve. And I was thinking it would land, you know, somewhat in the center section there where, you know, it's still in the bumper area. On this one, it is slightly past the edge of the bumper. It's into the curve, so I actually had to use a pie cut to fill the hole, but it's not structural. It's a bumper. It's holding the nose piece. It's It'll do its job just fine. Yeah, I'm going to cut the center out of that nose, and then the next time you'll see this, that nose will be permanently riveted on there, and we will address the wheel wells and cut and trim the nose piece and everything to fit that wheel well. So here we go. Sorry about the heater on behind me kind of loud, but here you go. Nose is on. It did fight me a little bit over here. You can see it's the panel got wrinkled a little bit. It's kind of ugly, which pisses me off. But for some reason, it just didn't. I think maybe this fender had a little extra whoop in it, maybe. It was a little deformed or something because it just didn't want to shape properly. So that's irritating, and I don't like it. But that side got a little wonky, but... Otherwise, she's on there, looks pretty good. Fits the contour about as best as it's gonna fit. This side, I mean, a little bit better. Not quite as rough, but I mean, you're putting a nose on a car that it's not really for, so you do the best you can do. Once you get paint and graphics and everything on it, it won't even be noticeable, except for, you know, the person who did it, they're gonna notice it. But you saw me cut this wheel well out. I already had the other one cut out, but. I videoed this one getting cut out for you. The little donut on there looks really weird. A much larger tire is going to be there when we're done here. But cut it, then took the flat wheel, cleaned it up because it's a race car. Little kids are going to be running up to it, wanting to touch it and stuff. So got to get all your sharp edges cleaned up so nobody gets cut messing with it. This plastic just leaves stuff everywhere. But that's it, man. Nose is on. There's a grill that goes in the front. I did cut that out. This is five star racing bodies. Uh, Chevy SS Dirt Grand National nose. A lot of guys use the Camaro one, but I prefer this one. It's the closest you're probably gonna get to a Cobalt nose. So, I mean, I want it to look like the car it's supposed to be. It's never gonna be a Camaro. So this is the nose I use. And uh, I buy the graphics kit and everything for it. So keep moving forward. Well, it's the first time this car has been up on the lift. You see. This is a Florida shell that made its way to New York. So this is probably the most solid car I've ever had in the shop. Um, 
the last one I did was really solid. That was an Arizona car, but it it had been here for a couple years and it was starting to get a little bit crusty. Um, not bad at all by any means. It was a fantastic shell to use. Um, that one went to Alabama. This one's going out of state as well. I'm still not telling anybody who the buyer is yet, but yeah, this shell is ridiculously clean. It's it's crazy how nice this car was. Uh, it had 240,000 miles on it because it was from Florida and it got driven, but the 2.2 that was in it, uh, we weren't going to use. It was an automatic transmission car, which we definitely aren't going to use, so the drivetrain was out, so the mileage no longer really matters, and we went through and replaced pretty much everything. So, new springs, new shocks, new brake hoses. Um, I got to put a new fuel filter in it, but I do have one. Um, yeah, the rear end got pulled out, got all cleaned up, painted, got, re got all the reinforcement done to it on both sides. Which, uh, there's a video for that on the page, on the on our on this YouTube page. There's, uh, there's one for reinforcing the rear end. Uh, it talks about we put this piece across the top. We wrap this bar around it, uh, this flat stock around the outside of it, because this Chinese steel is just weak, or Korean steel, or wherever the hell it came from. GM used, and it just, it's it's fine for street use, but when you start beating on it on a racetrack, it can't handle it. So, yeah, rear end's all re reinforced and cleaned up and painted, and brake lines and stuff are all replaced on it. Um, we haven't put the skid plate on the gas tank yet, and there's no exhaust in it, obviously, because there's no drivetrain in it. So, got to come through here and take all this heat wrap out and remove the, uh, oops, somebody pieced together some fuel lines here. I'm going to have to fix that. Uh, going to have to uh, replace or get rid of the return line and all that stuff because all the emissions crap is gone. We already took that out. The box was already gone. You noticed it back here. Bye-bye. And then the two hoses that went to it are actually put together here as a vent line up to the fill tube. Just stick them together. That'll come through here. It's ridiculous, right? How clean this thing is. You got you southern guys are you're used to this. Up here in the north, this this stuff is all rotted or starting to rot and gone and this thing's gorgeous. It's beautiful. And then up front here, you know, same thing. The subframe got pulled out, got cleaned up, painted and it's got new new brake hoses, new struts. It's got the G6 spindle swap, new wheel bearing, new rotors and pads. Same thing on this side, all new, new strut, new hoses. So now we gotta pick some stuff off of here and get the drivetrain put together and put in this car, move forward, get everything else hooked up. So a couple more weeks, hopefully this thing will be done. We can get, get it to the owner. But that's gonna be all for this video. The next stuff is kinda, we got some bouncing around to do and, Get some parts ready. But that's it for today. Keep it creative and happy building.